Hello! What's this? An unfamiliar sight, you see? I just finished killing Moog, the Lord of Blood. The boss you need to kill in order to gain access to Elden Ring's DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree. And that is precisely what we are going to do. So, let's not waste any time yapping. You came here to watch me die and not to hear me talk. Let us touch the hand of Mikola and journey to the land of shadows. Psych! We're starting a new playthrough. This is because of, well, many reasons, one of which is due to the fact that the character you saw previously was at a New Game Plus 5, making it quite well equipped to breeze through the DLC once I have enough items there. So instead, I would rather take you guys on the whole journey, because Elden Ring is truly a masterpiece of a game, and I want you to see just how beautiful this game is. Now, I will be skipping a lot of things, and I will try to get to the DLC as fast as possible, but there is some type of magic to the playthrough when you go through the whole thing. I will elaborate further on my plans, however, let us first get through the introduction cinematic, and I will see you on the other side. Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, Claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long-lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever-brilliant Gold Mask, fear the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othnir. The all knowing. And one other. Whom Grace would again bless. That's me, baby. A tarnished of no renown. Cross the fog to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring. and become the Elden Lord. Okay, time for me to start yapping. So first and foremost, we pay respects to our finger maiden. She died of Ligma while waiting for us, very, very sad, and left us a message. Though the path may be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. And that is precisely what we are going to do. So first of all, we will unequip everything in order to go kill the first trash mob that Miyazaki leaves at every single game. Well, usually he leaves a boss, but this time it's a trash mob. 
I call it a trash mob. I think it's a mini boss. I, I don't really care unless the boss is significant to the story. To me, it's essentially a trash mob. Uh, I highly recommend you don't do this, by the way. Just if you're trying to get into the game as fast as possible, just jump off the cliff and kill yourself. You'll see why later. But I want every single rune possible, so killing this guy will be beneficial for me in the, in the early game. Uh, like I said, we're just gonna be kiting him off and uh, trying not to take damage, because although he is a trash mob, a single hit from this guy can kill me, I am pretty sure of that. Uh, I'm not gonna let you guys suffer through this, let you, let's just uh, speed it up, kill this guy, and yeah, rinse and repeat, we're just gonna be kiting him. Very, very easy. Manipulate the AI. And by the time we are done with him, I want to tell you a few things about Queen Marika. Because she is a very nice character. And there we go. Right here. Okay, good. We get 3,200 runes. We get his weapon, shield. We're never going to use those, at least not in this playthrough. And then, I need to re-equip my items. Before we go into the lands between, here is Queen Merica. She is, I suppose, the main antagonist of the story, at least one of them. And she's a very nice character, a very cool character. She is a mixture of uh, Odin, the North Nordic god Odin. By the way, nascent uh, butterflies on the side, you can see them over here. These nascent butterflies represent Mikula, one of the most important demigods later down the line. But yeah, America is a mixture of Odin, Virgin Mary, and Jesus. And now to the... Thank you, Miyazaki. Okay, so that's the point of Elden Ring. Even if you beat the first quote-unquote boss, it's not really a boss, you still die. <laughs> I suppose this is uh, Miyazaki's way of uh, telling you that you're not going to have a good time. By the way, if you don't know who Miyazaki is, that's the guy who made the Soulsborne genre. He's the director and producer of Elden Ring. Let's let's see what happens to our character over here. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Oh man, that fall was painful. So, I did say that uh, I died. It doesn't really count as a death because I get to keep the 3,200 runes uh, I got from that boss. Or mini boss or trash mob whatever you want to call it uh, i will try not to die it's pretty hard in elden ring but uh i think the early game is very very easy so we're not really gonna have that much trouble dying the only thing i can realistically see killing me is gravity however uh, we're just gonna run through the uh tutorial area retrospectively speaking i don't know why i did this i should have just skipped it and ran to the lands between, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so this is the Soldier of God. He is the hardest boss in the game. Watch, watch. Oh my god, look at this hit. Watch, watch. Okay. Yep, as you can see, hardest boss in the game. Uh, unlike the one I just killed earlier in uh, the Chapel of Anticipation, the Soldier of God is an actual boss. Definitely not a trash mob. So, we will now proceed to uh, go through another opening door animation. Yep. So these animations are actually there to load the area, in case you're wondering. And there we go. Look at how beautiful this game is. 
first and foremost, obviously, we go and talk to Vare. Fun fact about Vare, the yes. Japanese version of him is voiced by Hidetaka Miyazaki himself. And uh, early on, I talked to him only because this guy will be important later down the line uh, in order to access the area that you need to go to in order to access the DLC. Uh, I will not make you guys sit through his entire dialogue only because he yaps way too much. And people, believe me, well, some of you are gonna like hearing the NPCs talk. But generally speaking on YouTube, people do not want to hear that. So we're just gonna skip through it. Essentially, to summarize what he says, he's a character that will nudge you forward into what you should be looking for in the early game and where you should be heading. It's time you set off, I should say. And our journey begins. So we're gonna skip the Tree Sentinel at the start. He's an enormous waste of time, really not worth it. We're gonna head to the Church of LA and talk to the merchant. You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. So we are going to be purchasing the cookbook and the telescope. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. And now we will head to our first objective right when we start the game. I do have to say I am taking this quite slowly at the start just to ease in some of my viewers because I know that not that many people who will be watching this video, uh, especially from my established viewer base, are going to be people familiar with Elden Ring. So I do not want to rush or skip way too much. This first area we're doing is essentially just where you get the map and uh, I believe you can grab a whetstone. It will be somewhere over here. So as you watch me gloriously miss two parries to hit one, let me give you some background about myself. I've been playing these types of games for a very, 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 very long time. In fact, they are probably, no, not probably, they are my favorite genre of games just of all time. I absolutely love the Soulsborne genre. So we pick up the map, and I have been playing since... Demon Souls, yeah, before Dark Souls 1. And over here, we are going to aggro the big guy, almost dying, but we don't run away. We hit a big parry into a vital. And now we need to run. We really need to run. You can see just how fast they quickly surround me. And I am getting ripped to pieces. Okay, nice. Let's uh, try to de-aggro all the enemies. This is called a strategic retreat, boys. It's a strategic retreat. We are not running away. We are retreating strategically. If that dog hit me, I would have died. So, we wait for them to de-aggro. This should be a safe distance. <laughs> look at them, look at them. They're about to... Oh, there we go. And now we pull him together. I know I have no HP, but we big dick this big dick! Look at that parry! Look at that parry, boys! And that's why you pick up the samurai. So this is where the wet blade should be. And here we will activate our first grace to get our maiden. Because maidens are very important. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? 
Hello! Now you might be surprised and you might be perplexed. Why am I interrupting this beautiful lady in order to interject my useless and boring thoughts? Well, first of all, it's because she yaps way too much. And unfortunately, on YouTube, the moment an NPC starts yapping, if the video is not about the NPC yapping, the viewership is going to get completely assassinated. It will get obliterated, so I will have to skip this dialogue. I will summarize it for those of you who care, though. She essentially introduces the concept of finger maidens and says she, that she is not one. However, she can fulfill the role of a finger maiden, allowing us to use runes and turn them into levels, which is precisely what we are going to do. I am going to save you the 10 minutes of yapping that she uh, is going to give to the Tarnished and skip right to the important waifu. This way, Tarnished. May I have a word? A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Renna. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. This is the introductory episode, but we will be doing her quest later down the line. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. What she gave us is a very good item that we can use in order to summon NPCs to help us. I will not use it. Forgive mine intrusion, Tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. Oh, we will, trust me. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? Again, since this is the introductory episode, the two fingers are essentially the envoys of the Greater Will, which is the big god. And now we go and talk to Melina one more time. So here Melina is going to be giving us more flavor uh, lore about the world, telling us about the guidance of Grace and why we should be following it. Grace are these golden-like thingies that we are sitting right next to, which are essentially power that is granted by the Earth Tree and the Elden Ring that govern the world of Elden Ring. As I said, I will be skipping the vast majority of these uh, flavor dialogues. If you guys want to hear them, they are available online. However, for the purposes of uh, the type of videos that we will be making, we do not need them. Additionally, and this is uh, quite important, in the future I am not even going to show you the NPCs talking. We're just gonna run past them or skip them completely. And that is because in the vast majority of situations, it is unnecessary. We want to kill bosses and kill enemies. After yapping for five more minutes, Melina tells us to go and face Godric the Grafted in Castle Stormvale, which we are going to go and do right now. This is just us walking to the path. Psych! More Melina dialogue. However, once again, uh, we are going to skip it. This is her just giving us more backstory about herself. Melina is someone who does not have a body because her body was burnt. Uh, does that matter? Yes, it does matter in terms of lore. However, if there is anything lore relevant, I will be the one telling you the lore stuff. You don't need to listen for the NPCs talking for 10 minutes. Because, good lord, NPCs in this game, they talk way too slowly. Everyone's been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. Once again, this is yet another NPC that we need to talk to in the early game. I apologize for the boring first episode. I know that it has a lot of just me running around, uh, killing a bunch of garbage trash mobs and talking to NPCs. However, this is just me getting the world ready for us to embark on our god-killing spree. This is another NPC that we need to uh, move into the roundtable hold, which we will go into in a few minutes. Now, before we go into Stormvale, there is one important thing, well, 
a few important things that I need to get ready around the map as well. Which is why this episode is episode 0 and not episode 1. <laughs> as you can see, a lot of prep is required for this playthrough. So there is a sword, a very specific sword that I want to grab from a caravan in Liurnia. And we are going to precisely do that. We skipped Castle Stormvale through a narrow hidden path. And now we are right in Liurnia. We keep going until we reach this merchant, we unlock the grace, and then we go grab the map of the area. Obviously got stunlocked by a bunch of trash mobs. The reason I got stunlocked right there is because uh, some dipshit left a message on, on top of the map so I couldn't grab it and run away. We grab this grace. Once again, Melina is going to show up to give us extra lore, which we are definitely going to listen to. Of course, of course, of course. Forgive me. And now we keep going in our journey to grab the Carrion Knight Sword on the other side of Liurnia. Of course, the journey in real time is around 10 minutes. I'm not going to subject you guys to that. We're just going to skip. <laughs> As you can see, the weather itself changes. This is how long I am traveling. And it changes again. Once again, this this was a very long journey in real time. We're not going to go through all of that in this video. Because uh, even while removing all the NPC yapping, we are already close to 22 minutes. The building you see up there is the Academy of Raya Lucaria. That is my favorite area in the entire game. And... The area that we will spend a lot of time in as it has many, 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 many stuff that are going to be conducive to our build. Now, I won't be using summons in this playthrough. We're just going to grab the sword because it scales with intelligence and I am going for a Spellblade build. What I mean by a Spellblade is essentially a uh, knight that uses, I suppose... Uh, magically crafted weapons to do his bidding and because right now i cannot uh, get the higher intelligence uh, items we're gonna just go with this sword however it's definitely getting replaced well. later down the line it Every is not a good weapon by any means for but a moment and now we will go to the round table hold with melina that is essentially going to be our hub area from this point onward, I have showed you all of the, uh, I suppose, relevant things in the early game. And at this point, we just go and talk to a bunch of NPCs that are going to be important for gameplay reasons. First of all, we free this guy and we interact with him in order to progress his questline. And then we run down to Limgrave and grab the map. And then we go and grab the Crystal Tears that will be useful for the Flask of Wonders Physic, which will be found right here at the Third Church of America. We grab the Tear and the Flask of Wonders Physic. We grab the uh, Sacred Tear in order to upgrade our uh, flasks. And then we sit down and have one final chat with Melina for this episode. Spoken echoes linger here. Words of Queen Marika who vanished long ago. If you wish, I will share them with you. Very well, my lord and thy warriors. I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. Well, perhaps that might serve you in lieu of a maiden's guidance. In the future, I might include certain dialogue lines from Melina since uh, she is really the only NPC that I think has relevant voice lines to the story aside from Rani. And when I say relevant to the story, I mean relevant to the actual main storyline that you are progressing through and not the lore of the game. When it comes to the lore of the game, don't worry about that. I will be talking about each area as we are killing enemies in it. For example, this place right here is Fort Height. It belonged to the guy we just talked to earlier, and now we are going to kill the soldier of Godric and return the fortress to its rightful owner. Hopefully once I hit a parry, which I miss here, and I'm about to miss here. Okay, great. Very good start. We have some crappy guy throwing fire pots at me. I'm gonna hit a parry eventually. There we go. 
and hopefully we don't miss this one. I'm about to miss it, ain't I? Yep, there we go. Okay, good. That was clutch. At any rate, uh, you guys let me know down in the comments, do you care about NPC dialogue? Do you not care? I personally, I'm going to be significantly more aggressive with skipping NPCs later down the line. Of course, I then immediately get oh, absolutely blasted by the rats. Rats are really dangerous in this game because they can stun lock you. They are the only real enemy that will uh, gang up on you one right after the other and just stun lock you. Most enemies are going to let you 1v1 or at least give you some windows of opportunity to run away or uh, fight back. However, rats are quite aggressive and nasty, as they should be. And then we will go kill this enemy once again. This is a complete trash mob. You guys don't need to suffer through this fight, so we're just going to skip it. Uh, incredibly easy. Now, will Selen be important? Eh, maybe. Uh, it's worth unlocking her in the early game, since uh, she does have a quest line that involves some... Actually, you know what? This was probably a waste of time looking back at it. However, she's an early game NPC, might as well, right? We will talk quickly to this girl, Irina. She has a very significant part in a quest line that I do want later. So we'll go and help her father in the castle at the distance. That fort, I believe, is called Fort Morn. And once we get to it, right past the giant, which we will kill since he's obstructing our path, we will enter the castle, right into the elevator. And then up. Skipping these guys, since they are a huge waste of time. And running straight to uh, Irina's father, which I believe is right over here. There we go. We will talk to her father, do the uh, magical dialogue thingies, and then we will go fight the boss to finish this quest. So this boss, again, another trash mob. I apologize for the boring episode. We've been killing trash mobs the whole episode that are disguised as bosses, so we're just going to speed this fight up. Uh, at this point in time, I haven't died a single time because, well, when you're fighting trash mobs, it is very difficult for you to actually die. As I almost do. Ah, psych, I hit the parry. I think we can stunlock this guy. Shouldn't I just jump and hit him with heavies? Uh, probably? Yeah, I'm definitely way too scared in this fight. I should just jump and hit him with heavies. You can stunlock this guy and uh, he just dies. Yeah, there we go. I think I figured it out here. Yeah, just stunlock him with heavies. And kill him. Okay, great. Like I said, this is not going to be whatsoever what uh, the uh, next episodes are going to look like. By the way, this is the weapon you get from killing him. It's an homage to the author of Game of Thrones, George R.R. Martin, since he is, uh, I suppose, the world-building guy of this game alongside Miyazaki. He gave them the early script. We go into the uh, one of the dungeons. We kill the boss there. Once again, another trash mob. This is the Beast Man of Farum Azula. He's going to become a normal trash mob later down the line. We pick up the talisman, we go into the cave. Now, this cave is a bit significant because you can find in it a somber smithing stone one, which is a weapon upgrade material for our sword, and we do want that. This boss is, again, another trash mob. As you can see, you probably know why I spent so much time skipping these enemies. They are a huge, huge waste of time, and they're not really that... Uh, interesting for the video let's say definitely me talking and running around and telling you about the story and the lore of melina is probably more interesting right right <laughs> uh, i'm sorry for this boring episode however don't be discouraged we have reached the end and now all we have to do is upgrade our weapon and in the next episode we will be invading stormvale castle and killing godric the grafted if you uh, guys have any comments or feedback on this series, let me know down in the comments. As I said, future episodes are going to be significantly more different than this. It 
we're just going to be fighting enemies in the future. There is not going to be much talking to NPCs. I'll be very, very aggressive in skipping them. Unless the NPC has some really mind-blowing important dialogue. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. But thank you all for watching this experimental episode. I just put it here for practice. And, uh, oh, by the way, guys, I forgot this dipshit. Welcome back, boy! You have to kill him. Now, some of you are going to say, Oh, my name for now. Why did you not bow? He was respecting you. Why did you backstab him? This motherfucker is just gonna sit back and cast spells on me. He's the least honorable fighter I've ever seen in my life. We're just gonna parry his ass and kill him. We haven't died a single time at this point, so that's good. I don't think we're gonna die here. We are definitely not going to. This guy isn't that- Whoa! Ho, ho, whoa. Holy clutch! Easy! Easy! Okay. So as I said, we haven't died a single time in this episode. That would have been very, very embarrassing if I died there. Holy shit, right at the end as well. That was very clutch. Uh, this was episode zero, experimental episode to see what people think. However, I promise you, moving forward, the future is gonna hold many more interesting and more action-packed episodes as we invade Stormvale Castle in the next one. Thank you for watching and take care.